describes Allah as Arhamur Rahimin, the most merciful of those who show mercy. Yet the Islamic tradition says Allah is al Qatir, the Abaysa, and Al Mudir, the humiliator. And we know that uh, from Islamic sources that Allah will inflict immense pain on people in Hellfire. So the argument could be made that it is irrational that Allah is Arhamur Rahimin and Al Qatir and Al Mudir at the same time as it's conflicting. And uh, there's an ex-Muslim on YouTube that recently posed a question to you. Uh, he says, and he provides a similitude, he says that if a person was in a married relationship, he or she could describe himself as the faithful one. But when that person is caught in bed with someone who is not, uh, who, who they're not in a relationship with, this person could simply say, I have another two attributes, such as the philanderer or the cheat. So, this sounds absurd as the person is obviously not, not displaying the characteristic of being the faithful one. So how can Allah be Arham al-Rahimin and Al-Mudil and al qatid simultaneously? Okay, here the, um, the objection is that how can God be described with attributes which he is claiming are attributes that contradict one another? So the response is that the, firstly these attributes are called sifatul al which are attributes of the divine actions of God attributes of the divine actions so you can have a man to give you a worldly example even though walillahi mathalul a'la you can have a man who has the attribute of being peaceful and calm but at the same time at moments he can be angry I mean, there's no contradiction in action in the sense that these are attributes of the individual at points he can show anger when is anger a good thing if, if a thief breaks into his house and in order to restrain the thief he shows anger when is calmness good when he is giving a judgment uh, meaning that is a good attribute to have so when we ascribe all these attributes to God in the Quran Rahimin, the most merciful of those who are merciful but at the same time, within the Qur'an, he has other attributes. What does this entail? The conclusion, the summary of the answer, is those attributes, the effect of those attributes is shown to those whom he wills. Meaning, when he says he is Arhamur Rahimin, the most merciful and merciful, that would mean that he shows mercy to those whom he wills. Who does he will to show that mercy to? It varies from groups to group meaning in this world mercy is shown to everyone to a degree believers and disbelievers but God has told us in the Quran that if there are groups of people that the message of Islam has reached and after comprehending the message they refuse they will be punished so his mercy in some cases is conditional by his divine will likewise other attributes, the effect of those attributes we observe in his creation also. Meaning there is no contradiction in those divine attributes. These are known as sifatul of ta'ala. Uh, so the, the example given of a man who is married, commits adultery, and then when he is caught in adultery, he says that he is, uh, aside from being an adulterer, he has the other attributes. This example doesn't this is a disanalogy why is it a disanalogy because the attribute of being married and committing adultery and then he says uh, aside from being loyal I am also a person who commits adultery that is a contradiction of attributes that contradiction is not found in the divine attributes those divine attributes are for effects uh, what we observe the effect within creation within different things varies from thing to thing so God can raise someone whom he wills and lower someone whom he wills so th there's a distinction between the two is Arhamur Rahimin exclusive to the pious believers in the next life? in the next life it's exclusive to believers as well as uh, specific groups that are mentioned meaning people children for instance who are not believers or people who the message of Islam never reached. So th there is no dis contradiction as the person is claiming. But the 
uh, objection, that objection that you refer to started with the person making an objection as to why did God create people in the first place if he knew they will go to hell. And I responded to that by saying he conferred upon them a favor of life, intellect and free will. Life, intellect and free will is a greater gift than non-existence.